Welcome to this week's edition of The Closing Bell. Salt and Pepper here. Salt of the Earth, Mark Boyer. How are you? Salt of the Earth. That's what, that's what we put on my name. Is, is that my new name or what? That's a good one. So when I think about Salt of the Earth, I just think about, I mean, when you say somebody's Salt of the Earth, it just, it kind of means like they're old, right? Is that what that means? Or they're... I always thought that they're like so... Uh, what does that mean? Integrated in in the world like they're they've been they've withstood the test of time they're wise i don't know that's what i always took it as but okay. all right maybe one of our viewers or listeners can give us the real meaning of it. salt of the earth all right <laughs> that's my name today salt and pepper here right it's fun to be together so it's great what's pepper well pepper is uh it adds a little zest to... yeah it adds a little zest oh, to okay. your to your dish a little zest yeah. to your life <laughs> i got the pepper here i got the salt here here we go all right good stuff you doing good, Jake? Doing great. You know, my family's been a little sick. I'm sure a lot of our viewers and listeners have uh, have been dealing with the same thing. Just you know, winter, colds, flus, through, whatever. Man. Yeah, it's rolled. It's rolled through our family, right? And uh, yeah. So we hope everybody listening here is doing better and, and uh, healthy. It's uh, yeah, it's been a tough one, and it's kind of wild. It rolls through, and then some. You know, especially with you, because you got the little kids, yeah. right? And then they get sick, and then. Then they pass it to the next one, but it seems like they're not all sick at the same time. So it sort of rolls and then time yes. goes on, right? It's so a domino a effect. effect. <laughs> but so. we do have a good one for you today. So we're going to try something a little different, uh, pick specific topics that we think will interest our viewers and listeners here. Um, but to start it off, uh, I think what's important, right, Mark, is to talk about kind of, you know, as the old saying goes, as goes January, as goes the rest of the year. Hopefully that's yeah. true, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we're off to a solid start. Um, the, you know, Dow and S&P have been hitting highs and uh, NASDAQ's, you know, creeping up on one. Um, you want me to share this? We can actually uh, take a look yeah. at it. Let's bring it up. Uh, and uh, see what we got here. Um and show that a little bit. So here's the S&P 500. This is a uh, weekly chart. If you're uh, if you're watching us and you can see it, that's great. But you'll you'll see. So this is a weekly chart. So every one of uh, you know these red or uh, blue lines represents a week. Okay. So this is this chart actually is going back to 2016. It shows you what the market has done during that period of time. What's really interesting is just to look at is here back in late 2021. You can see here that, um, or uh, yeah, uh, you know, the, the S&P had a high of 4818. Um, and that, <clears throat> now you look across to the right, you know, we from there, we pulled back. 2022 was a rough year in the yeah. stock market as the Fed continued to raise rates. We had a series of downtrends, you know, try to recover. We ended up down at 3491, and then uh, which hit in, in actually October of 2022. And then uh, 2023, we had a solid year, as everybody's you know seen in their their uh, portfolios in the stock part of you know it's been fairly solid. Although a lot of it's been magnificent seven, you know a lot of these specific tech stocks. But overall, the market itself, the S and P is is uh, is moved back up. We had a pullback here starting in um, in July of this last year that lasted until um, you know October. November. December, but November one, you know, basically we talked about, remember we were talking about October is usually yep. a bear, a bear killer. Yep. And uh, sure enough, um, you know, the markets hit a, hit a low in late, late October and started from uh, November started to really move up and then really exploded actually in December when uh, Powell came out and they basically said they were done raising rates for a while. And so the market really loved that. And, and so it's continued into the year. And so the key test was at 4818. And you can see if I, Put a line there of that old high. Okay, back to we can see that uh, over the last about three, four weeks ago, uh, the S and P actually broke into new highs. And so we're, you know, it's it's interesting technically when 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 uh, indexes and stocks hit new highs, um, they sort of just pile on. It's it's the sellers are are gone. Anybody who was selling to try to get their money back is usually out and now it's now everybody's making money and you're seeing some of that cash we've been talking about probably coming off the sidelines to uh to, you know to be a part you know because there's that fear of missing out right so a lot of people haven't participated so it's key you see that so the s p's hitting highs here's the dow same thing with the dow you see that the dow hit uh 
3692 um, back in late o October. And now we're, you know, we broke that here again, a weekly chart. That one actually broke into new highs uh, about six, seven weeks ago. So that one's actually been doing better to Dow, which is, you know, index of 30 stocks, industrials, uh, you know, key big companies, all multinationals has really been up. And today, this week, we're up at the other 19. The one interesting one, Jason, is the NASDAQ. So NASDAQ is is uh, one that everybody, you know, they follow. Basically, it's, you know, loaded with tech stocks and all these, uh, you know, all types of great companies there. It's, uh, it's you know, what's interesting about this this index, actually, is that, you know, the high was 16212 um, back in, in October uh, or November, I should say, 21 or late, late 2021. And, um, and we have now just getting uh, to that, you know, today, we're at right at 16,000, which might be, it's the only index so far that hasn't hit a high aside from the Russell 2000. But in regards to the larger indexes, that's the one that you just sort of, we're getting this pull to about 16 to 16 two. It's going to be very interesting to see if the NASDAQ can break into new highs past 16 two. So, Anyway, I mean, you know, we, we, we said in one of our last calls that we thought, you know, there'd be high single digit returns overall in the markets. And it looks like, you know, we're going to at least get to that here early in the year. Uh, you know, barring any unforeseen things, it's really interesting to see just how it's almost like a magnetic pull that, uh, you know, the markets come to these resistance points. And then at some point, if they break them, you can see a, a follow through and the market continue. So anyway, um, Thought that would be interesting to show our, our listeners and viewers today, but that's uh, that's kind of where we're at right now. Yeah, and some good points you brought up. So showing nearly 75 years of historical data uh, for the S&P 500, you know, if if, if the markets, if, if the S&P specifically rose in January, then the average gain for the remainder of that year was about 12%. So, yeah. you know, we said 6 to 8% this year of returns because of the incredible run we've had, the rally we've had. Um, since, since, you know, the lows of, what was it? October of, uh, yeah. 2022 really. And then the market yeah. kind of came back. We had a pullback again, kind of later last year till that October. And then November was off to the races from that point. So again, pullbacks of 10% having those, those corrections are fairly normal. Um, so we expect at some point the market to, to take some of these earnings, these gains off the table. But uh, but again, hopefully we're wrong, right? Hopefully the market continues to go up. That would be great for everybody. But you know, at some point, um, you know, those corrections or bear markets uh, do help kind of take some of this the uh, the steam out of out of uh, potential longer term downdrafts. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Obviously, throwing in presidential election years, uh, we predict volatility. They they historically show volatility, so. Will we get that, you know, as we inch closer to nominations and, you know, heading into to November election season? Probably so. But yeah. again, these 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 magnificent seven stocks, this these these AI companies, uh, these companies that are just absolutely crushing top and bottom line estimates um, in these earnings seasons is just remarkable. So, you know, it doesn't it seem is. as stretched as as people think in terms of PE ratios. Yes, some companies are arm specifically this week went up what seventy five percent, something like that. Yeah. So crazy, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, some some particular companies look, uh, you know, look stretched. Uh, those magnificent seven stocks. I mean, Nvidia is still hitting highs. Uh, Super Micro. I mean, there's some companies that are just rolling here. Um, but again, I want to stress that you know, I've been in this business a long time and lived through the 99, 2000, 2001, the tech, you know, the bubble, they call it now, historically, where everything rolled over the dot com era. Um, one huge, you know, a lot of people are trying to compare, uh, you know, this time to that. And yep. and, you know, you can make comparisons, all that it gets when it gets so frothy that everybody's just like a genius in stocks because you whatever you buy, it goes up. And so. You know, there's all those things that I'm watching for. I don't see it yet in in people's attitudes or whatever. But um, but the one thing that, you know, I've been talking to people about in this case is that the reality is, is that this is not unlike that period. And because the companies that are rolling have incredible mm -hmm. earnings. OK, we talked yep. about this AI kind of Preach transformation. It. <laughs> it, they have incredible earnings. And back in the dot com in the late 90s, early 2000s. 
it was just if you had a dot com on your name, like you just bought it because it was new and it was going to go and they were losing money. These companies would be losing money like crazy, but their stocks were just rolling. And so I'm not saying that we could get a significant pullback at some point, yeah. but it's different that way. in that, um, you know, earnings have always been the thing that drives stock prices because you got to watch the earnings. And when you have earnings like we do in this transformational new industry with AI, you know, love it or hate it. It's a reality is that there's a lot of sales and money's changing hands there. And these companies are making huge bucks. So um, what we just want to see in the markets is that it always, the markets are always, you know, bringing in other people, right? Other companies, it's, it's a broad based rally, not right. just a, uh, you know, as, you know, seven companies or six now Tesla's out of it, but yeah. you know, you've got these certain companies that, you know, got everybody sort of, you know, all, all, you know, the uh, the tides come in and everybody, all the boats are rising. That's that's a very positive, strong because a lot of the companies that haven't moved so much are they got good earnings and their PE ratios back to what you're talking about. Their PE yeah. ratios are actually fairly low. There's still some value, mm -hmm. a lot of value in some of these companies. Yep. So you want to see those kind of moves. So you want to see the industrials move. You want to make sure small caps. That'll be a key. I mean, watching the Dow. I'm sorry, the yep. Russell and the small yep. companies is going to be really important as well because uh, that's one area that's not necessarily hit uh not hitting new highs yet um yep. on the russell and, uh, yeah yeah flat so for the year yep yeah so that one's that one's basically flat uh it had a high i'm not going to pull the chart you know for but this last stock uh december um we hit a high on the russell of about 2071 and we're at 2009 right now so you know um We'd like to see those small caps, which, um, you know, those, those to be a part of this would be, again, showing some broad ba base, uh, you know, uh, benefits to this to this rally. And small caps, we got to remember for our listeners and viewers, obviously, we talk about this, but small caps, again, are, are a great way. Again, you got to be selective because a majority of the Russell 2000 of, the, of those companies that are, make up that index are not profitable yet. So yeah. being selective in what you buy. Uh, in that space, we we do have our favorites um, that are cash flow positive. We look for you know companies that are growing their revenues, their earnings per share, yeah. that have generated free cash flow, uh, and continue to to grow those those caches as well. Um, I think you know small caps coming out of a high interest rate environment, those tend to yeah. actually outperform and are attractive moving forward. Once the Fed does start indicating, hey, you know we're cutting rates, things are looking you know, brighter and clearer, those, those small caps should, should hopefully start performing. Yeah. The other thing there is to watch interest rates, right? So that's, yep. uh, yep. you know, with the small caps, you know, they're more dependent and have been more dependent on regional banks for mm -hmm. borrowing yep. and things like that. So that, you know, the whole issue we dealt with last year with the regional, you know, uh, Silicon Valley, that whole bit, that's rolling itself through, right? And so a lot of this interest rate, you know, these loans are coming due, they're refinancing at higher rates. You know, that's kind of the challenge right now. So we got to keep an eye on that. And, you know, thus far the, you know, um, you know, it's another area we need to watch in the kind of the 10 year treasury. Um, you know, we're right now we're at, you know, 4.1, 4.2% roughly, um, you know, really hoping that yeah. that doesn't bust up you know, pass back up into the fives or 4.2 beyond. Cause you know, that would be, that could be a negative thing to pull the markets down and be hard for small caps, especially in uh, those areas. But so we kind of keep an eye on that too. Uh, that's why we need the small caps to participate um, to show longer term strength here. I think. Yes, no, absolutely. And I was actually just reading something today uh, that was talking about how <clears> banks <throat> are starting to lend again. Um, and that yeah. basically the yields, cause yields have come down almost a full hundred basis points since late last year, yeah, since last year. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so companies that maybe had financed at higher rates, maybe will be able to get a percentage point lower, perhaps again, depends on banks and what rates are, are as of that day. But, but again, it's, it's interesting to see, like you're saying, just monitoring that and watching that our yields going to spike again, or are they on their way down? Uh, it's going to be interesting, but that brings us to our next topic, which factors in interest rates. So, you know, talking about investors, right? We're all investors, whether it's stocks, bonds, real estate, investing in your personal health, your spirituality with, with the Lord, whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, your family, there's a lot of ways to invest 
right? Which I love the word invest. You're putting conscious effort into something, right? Yeah. So I'm going to share my screen here, which is which is going to be quite interesting, and I think our viewers and listeners will uh, will think so as well. So it's a, it's a chart talking about market expectations of Fed funds rates versus the actual realized rates that uh, that the Fed either cuts or or raises those rates to. Mm -hmm. So investors usually get it wrong. Let's just let's just state it like it is. You know, Wall Street has misjudged the trajectory of interest rates in recent years. You know, initially think about two years ago now, right? The Fed, yeah. uh, you know, was pushing towards five, five and a quarter percent where we're at now. Never in our wildest dreams did we think it would get up that high. Oh, you know, they're they're cutting so aggressive or they're raising rates so aggressively, excuse me, that more than likely they weren't going to get to five. There's no way. There's no way. We'll We'll nip this in the butt way earlier than that. You know, inflation will come down earlier than that. Well, look, inflation has been stickier than expected, though we do think, you know, we get our newest inflation data here early this next week. It could reach down to or fall down to 2.9%. That's that's the estimates there. But we always get it wrong, you know, and that's that goes to, to I think, your point. You've mentioned quite a bit, whether it's investing in stocks or fixed income, whatever it may be. Like we really don't know what's going to happen in the short term. We don't. And, and the Fed's trying to be data dependent. But at the same time, what did we say a few months ago? Oh, March. It's looking like March is going to start with rate cuts. That's not happening anymore. You know, the, Fed, the, yeah. the market's priced in six rate cuts. We'll probably get maybe three potentially, like the Fed said back in December. Maybe they were actually right. Who knows? But it, it's an interesting place to be. So any thoughts on that? Like, any wisdom, salt of the earth that you can share on on why investors usually get it wrong? Is it just our personal psychology, you know, our psychological makeup that's like, oh yeah, like they're going to cut, they're going to cut, like things are moving in the right direction. Like, wh what is it? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, nobody knows what tomorrow brings. None of us do. I mean, it's not just investing. It's like, you know, it's, it's uh, living life, right? We don't know. We just don't know. I mean, only God knows what's going to happen, <laughs> yep. you know, in the next couple of minutes. And that's why, um, you know, uh, we just got to trust him on those things. But in regards to, you know, in, in our personal lives, but in regards to this, I mean, I, I, you know, I always think about Warren Buffett, right? He's this famous, you know, investor and like, the, yep. you know, they, they give him all, is he a salt of the earth guy? I don't, maybe, I don't think they call him salt of the earth. <laughs> But, uh, but, you know, he's, he said one time, basically, and I'll paraphrase, like, we have no idea what's going to happen in the next, you know, three months, yeah. next couple of quarters. We have no idea. Um, he said, but we do our research, you know, you do your research, you do all those things in order to try to pick good stocks, but, no, but nobody knows. So I think that's, <clears throat> excuse me, I think that's why, you know, diversification, um, having people help you, you know, make decisions, because sometimes if we make if we're investors and we're, you know, just doing it ourselves, you know, you have a tendency to, <clears throat> yeah, you can make a lot of positive moves, but overall, I wonder how much you hurt yourself versus, you know, getting, you know, good counsel from other people. That's what, that's what I love about this is being able to help people, you know, maybe provide some counsel to them about how they, <clears throat> how they do their investing. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's not unusual. We're wrong. Um, you know, I, I think in this case, you and I, are we talking about, you know, we thought higher for longer, you know, mm -hmm. we were talking about, you know, a rolling recession, you know, things that some other people hadn't talked about, perhaps. Um, and uh, and a lot of people have. We're not, we're not singled out. But, you know, yeah. there's, there's been many times where I've been wrong about what I think is going to happen. That's why I think, yeah. you know, diversification, having a time frame, understanding what you're, you know, having a financial plan to know exactly like what's our, you know, what's our target assumptions. Goal. Yeah. Uh, those things. So all that's important because we just don't know. Um, we just don't know. So that's, you know, uh, yeah. So, but we have, we can get a good idea, you know, but right now, I mean, it's interesting, you know, watching the 10 year yield and so forth, you know, we've been talking about bonds and it's a great time for bonds because if the interest rates do drop, which by the way, we still think they will, but we've been saying yeah. higher for longer too. But how about if that doesn't go the way? I mean, how about if, you know, things kick in and, and you know, um, inflation, you know, stays high and they, ha you know, it's 
this is possible they have to raise rates again. I mean, that's, that's very possible. And so we're not having, we haven't mm. cut that out. I mean, that's very possible, but um, you know, that's why you got to risk reward, right? Trying to figure out those things. It's, it's important to be, I think, just diversified in this whole thing. That's, I can't preach that enough. I mean, I think great wealth is made in specific stocks and, you know, um, you know, we, we got, con we got clients that, you know, made a good, you know, uh, they work for a particular company or whatever, and they've gotten stock options and that company's done really well and they've accumulated yeah. a lot of wealth, but, uh, especially when you get in retirement, it's just so important for, for us to be diversified and trim some of those areas maybe and diversify into some other things that can also do well, but give you some, some, uh, that, 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 you know, Ying when the other thing yangs, right. Or whatever, yeah. whatever that, however <laughs> you want to say that, um, that, that you're just, uh, you got things that, that are offsetting the risk proponent of that. That's really important, especially as we're getting older is, is mitigating risk as much as possible. Absolutely. There's some good points. And <clears throat> honestly, for our, for our viewers, if you're watching this, you can see those blue streaks that kind of look like, you know, I want to say nails on a chalkboard. They're kind of like little ribbons waving in the wind on the, on the effective rate line. And if you're listening, there's a, it just looks like your kid, you know, was drawing mountains and then little brother or sister came in and put some blue hair or ribbons on it. Then that's just insinuating the fact that investors are usually wrong when, and if they start cutting uh, or raising rates, you know, and history shows us we've we're wrong a lot of the time on that. So, I mean, if you want to look at the data right now, added over 350,000 jobs past month, um, you know, inflation's coming down, but it's not to the Fed target yet. Uh, they're fearful of reinflation, uh, just going higher. So, will they will they cut rates? Will they pause? It's looking like they're just going to hold course right now. But again, that could change at the next meeting. But at this yeah. point, I think the but, point is no one knows. Yeah. So looking at those little blue squiggly lines, whatever, it looks like from where we are right now, based on that, you know, there are some people or I don't know where these are coming from, honestly. Do you know, like, uh, who's making these? Yeah, it's, so it's, from, it's Bespoke from, Investment Group did survey and research uh, okay. on this. So it's just expectations of different of uh, different analysts and, and yeah. Uh, companies. Yeah, so. You know, we're still in that range, it looks like possibly whoever that, you know, is closer. But those first ones were really wrong. Uh, you know, but I'll just say this, like, so for the normal person, right, Jason, I mean, I, you know, um, I was at Costco the other day because my wife and yep. I go, it seems like I'm glad I bought Costco stock years ago because I spent a lot of money <laughs> there with our family. But um, but man, I mean, you know, meat prices, uh, everything's, you know, further. <laughs> it's not. You know, we talked about this, the difference between disinflation and, you know, and uh, recession, all those things, right? About the fact that it's just still it's really expensive to just get basic food items. Um, you know, gas come down a little bit, but, you know, for a lot of us, we're still, I mean, that inflation number is really, you know, it's really eaten away. So all that to me, I was saying is that it's, uh, it's interesting, you know, just the, that, that inflation situation is still there and things are still there's certain items that are still going higher and higher yep. and uh and, and that could be another subject we could focus on that in lots but it's um anyway it's so so anyhow all the point is is i think you know it'll be interesting to see when in fact uh rates will start coming down and the market you know market watching the 10-year yield i mean you can the market is pretty good at um and they're not perfect either because they don't always get it right but you'll see that right now there's still some question as to whether it is going to, you know, if, when they're going to cut rates based on what's been happening, what Powell said recently, there's just some things there. So it's going to be, uh, yeah, it's still really interesting to see what's, what's up, but still think longer term rates will come down, yep. but we just don't know when they'll start doing that. Right. And honestly, it's better to be early than late on that. If you're going to extend duration, now's, now's the time. Even yeah. Yesterday was the time, right? Because if you're late, you miss out on multiple percentage points potentially. You, you're talking about from you're talking about making that move too in bonds, uh, fixed yes. in to go more duration. Yeah, yes. That's so. That's what we preached about the dollar cost averaging because you don't know. Yeah. You can you can do that in small bits, dollar cost averaging into more duration, because mm -hmm. again, uh, the short term rates are still pretty strong. I mean, they're still yep. you know so for cash needs and for those people that are super nervous, yeah, you can still you know ultra short 
um, you know, short duration, yeah. short duration stuff, whatever that uh, can still be beneficial. But again, really wise to have not all your eggs in that basket. Start to to dollar cost average into duration. And we talked about the bond math last time because that can be really huge, huge uh, win for you as an investor. The next 12, 18 months, if rates do drop, in fact, as much as we anticipate it will. Yeah. So last thing we want to talk, touch on today is uh, the latest 10 year treasury auction. So <clears throat> hang tight with us here. This is this is uh, going to possibly enter the geopolitical spectrum, politics spectrum. So I think it's important. All right. So basically, you have domestic and foreign buyers of our of our national debt, right? So government issues debt to finance their operations and pays interest back, right? That's, that's the basic hierarchy knowledge of, of how treasury auctions or debt, debt auctions work. So in recent cases, domestic demand for our treasuries has been higher, but this was the third largest auction uh, for 10-year treasury notes in our, in our history, in our recent history. And over 70% of the buyers were foreign. Hmm. So there could be multiple scenarios or multiple thoughts on, on why that is. Personally, I think with everything going on in the world, war, Middle Eastern war, uh, threat of a potential wider spread conflict in that region, World War III, Russia, Ukraine, um, the Houthis, you know, threatening to cut the underwater cable in the Red Sea, which accounts for one fifth of the internet um, in the world, I believe, or if not Europe. So, I mean, those are all real things. The the, the shipping um, through the Red Sea, which which you know connects Asia and Europe, and a lot of the countries that rely on that trading route to get their goods. Uh, you know, which drives up price, which could restoke inflation, specifically in the European Union, Union and the UK um, and Eastern Europe as well. So it's it's very, very interesting to look at who's buying our debt and why um, China. So historically speaking, China was the largest holder. At one point, they had over one point three trillion dollars of our debt. Um, that is down to less than eight hundred billion dollars now. So almost half half the amount. Japan is the largest debt holder. Um, but again, it, it's, it's quite interesting. So, so Mark, I want to get your thoughts on this. Um, you know, China's economy, right. Uh, from something that we talked about today. So again, I'll get your thoughts on this because you've seen a lot of different things that have happened in the, in the world as salt, right. As salt of the earth. <laughs> you've been through a lot which is not a bad, it's a good thing, right? History shows us a lot about how the world and the economies of the world are impacted by geopolitical events. So China is having a massive crisis in the real estate market, uh, in the banking sector. Banks are three times more leveraged than US banks were in 08, 09, when we had our great financial collapse. Three times more leveraged. You're having Chinese people uh, Chinese investors trying to sell property internationally now because nobody's buying there. And these banks, these these real estate loans are being defaulted on at record numbers. It's 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 horrible. It's it's an econ economic collapse like we've never seen outside of the US, meaning. So what are your thoughts on that? Is do you think it's gonna be spread, you know, to to the United States and other economies around the world? Or are we looking at more isolated incident? What are we what are we looking like here? Yeah, so I'm not going to pretend to be any expert on China or um, you know what's going on. All I all I know is that you know they have some they do have a crisis happening with uh, you know I think a lot of the uh, you know years of putting limits on how many kids you could have uh, you know and you know they're so they're young people workforce. coming up. There's there's a lack of uh, workforce uh, and mm -hmm. at the same time there's a huge huge amount of, uh, as, as I understand is the, you know, that, that younger generations aren't finding jobs because, you know, the China, the economy is just struggling and you're going to have commercial, uh, you know, commercial companies and commercial loans that are, you know, it's just, uh, it doesn't sound like it's very good there. They've stretched their, their spending out in lots of places. And, um, you know, 
it's uh it's it's not looking positive there. So we yeah, that's probably why they you know why have they sold off so many treasuries then? Um, you know, uh, you know, pulling money out, you know, because the economy again is so weak. It's uh it's it's just it yeah, it is an interesting place and in, you know, they're becoming less of a force on the international um you know in this space, but at the same time I know that they're I, you know, their ideas or their goals are still to become, you know, one of the largest, you know, the largest economy in the world. And, to, yeah. you know, it's all about overtaking the U.S. I think a part of the, what you're talking about in the foreign buying is that I think, you know, we hear a lot about the demise of America. And I'm, you know, I think we have a moral, we have a lot of issues going on and moral yeah. decay that's happening here. Um, I'd encourage anybody, you know. <laughs> I've been reading my Bible and, you know, uh, revelation and reading some stuff on just, uh, old prophecies. It's really interesting. I mean, you know, I don't know, uh, as a Christian, I mean, I'm, I'm like, wow, it's kind of crazy how a lot of things are lining up based on biblical prophecy. It's, uh, but again, we don't know when, when the Lord returns, if he does and what's going to happen next, but it's, you know, so you can look at it from that perspective. Um, you know, and there's a lot of people looking at our country and saying, you know, that we've, we're not, uh, we're not who we were, um, and that's true in a lot of ways. But it looks to be uh, based on the things that are happening. It's still, and look at our borders like today, right? I mean, we have a border crisis like no other. Yeah. But in a way, even investors are wanting to get it and be a part of. You know, they feel safe in the U.S. and the opportunity um, there. So I think you know part of the auctions you're looking at that is. Uh, you know, uh, a desire to, to hold and be, you know, invested in the U S it's one of the safe havens still, um, yep. you know, that looks like, uh, that, you know, we're here, you know, there's a lot about the dollar and a drop of the dollar and how, you know, we have, uh, there's you no, know, the fact is, <clears throat> you know, we've spent so much money and printed so much, but the dollar has really lost a lot in value. Um, and that's true, but yet at the same time, it's still on a national internationally still the strongest, you know, it's kind of the, still the currency of choice, you know, yep. I don't know that that always be the case, especially if we continue down this road, we're headed down. Um, uh, but at the same time now it's, uh, it's still, it's still that. So, um, I think, you know, yeah, I think if we get our house in order, it'll be even stronger. Um, but that's, yeah. you know, uh, you know, the key is in, in, uh, yeah. So just when you're talking about economies and how you run a country like China, the way they want to run their country, you know, um, <clears throat> I just think capitalism, you know, when it's done right and it's uh, and there's it's there's freedom in it to let people work hard to to earn money and to take care of their families and to have less government involved in regulation and so forth. It's proven to show that it produces wealth, not only for it, it kind of across the all the, you know, across the board, not, not just yeah. the rich are getting richer, but even those that, you know, didn't have jobs now are getting jobs. And even the poor, you know, we saw, uh, you know, a few years back that actually everybody was, you know, yeah, it was all growth, yep. yeah, yeah. But, but now we, you know, now it's, so it's interesting. It's, uh, you know, we got a lot of geopolitical issues and political issues here, but good news is at the current time, we're still, you know, looking to be the, place where people want to invest. Japan, you know, you mentioned Japan is, you know, we've been talking about Japan. That's an area internationally. They're starting to really do some good things in Japan. Their economy's picking up and we're hearing more and more about the fact Pro that capitalist. from our from our uh, a lot of our advisors, people we work with who are doing investing and looking into companies, you know, around the world, they're finding incredible opportunities in Japan, which is kind yeah. of interesting, yeah. you know, right? And so yeah. they're um yeah, so they're they're investing in the U.S. too, and 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 uh, yeah, it's it's really it's weird that you know, and that's not a that's a good thing, you know. Japan to me, I I, I like hearing that Japan's involved with, uh, you know, buying some of our treasuries versus yeah. the China deal right now until they get their active together. Absolutely. So basically, to summarize all that, you know, a lot of geopolitical concern, a lot of even inflation issues around the world or potential for reinflation, reigniting inflation to higher levels, um, war, a lot of different issues, right? A lot of uncertainty. Let's just put it that way in the world. Where we still seem, even though in our own uncertainty, we still are that beacon on the hill that people look to 
And that's basically how you can sum up the purchase of, of the treasury auctions. A lot less, you know, domestic people, uh, domestic people, domestic uh, buyers in the market this this last auction, because honestly, people are favoring risk on assets at this point, especially when you know, see rates potentially coming down this year. We just talked about interest rates, whether you think they're going to be coming sooner or later this year. Uh, people are investing in big tech. People are investing in the stock market because as rates fall, that's favorable tailwinds for the stock market in general for earnings. And uh, especially for those small companies, you're trying to get companies off the ground that are fueled by growth and innovation. Borrowing money becomes cheaper. And so it's 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 a real tailwind. So that could be a potentially reason why we're seeing less domestic buyers and more foreign uh, because of a combination of all those things. But again, it'll be interesting to see kind of where we go from here. Yeah, yeah. And that's interesting that you even have less domestic buyers because I think with all that cash on the sidelines, right? We yeah. talked about what, five, six trillion dollars, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, they are going more risk on. But uh, again, as rates start to drop, you know, we feel like that a lot of that's going to go into more duration in the fixed income markets as well. Yep. So um, again, yep. that's why. That's why diversified portfolio, you got to have some duration in that side and not just be in treasuries or just be in CDs, just be in yep. all, you know, um, spread it out. I mean, uh, you know, take advantage of, uh, of the uh, opportunities that might present themselves here. So good point. Yeah, all good, man. It's good stuff. All right. Good we'll be back. Yep. We'll be back uh, next week with another edition of the closing bell. Mark, always great. And uh, we'll see you next time. Appreciate you. God bless you guys.